There's no denying that Firebase is the absolutely legendary managed backend system from Google that has been at the core of many successful startups. But there's also no denying that the API is a little clunky and it really doesn't integrate with today's tools like React and TypeScript. Convex is a Firebase competitor which is releasing 1.0 today and they have addressed a lot of issues with Firebase and have come up with a much better API service. If you like the real-time updating of Firebase, you're going to love the subscribable queries from Convex that are completely type-safe from front to back, which is incredibly hard to pull off in Firebase. Instead of Firebase's odd hierarchic data store, you get a really familiar relational database management system that's been greatly simplified to make it super easy to use. In terms of server functions, they are much easier to work with. The server deployment is absolutely seamless. They manage dev and prod for you. It's great. And I'm just getting started on the features in Convex 1.0. It's like somebody took Firebase and said, how do we do this right in 2023? Now, this video is sponsored by Convex, but I got to tell you, I've worked with Firebase in the past, and this is a huge upgrade. I wouldn't allow anyone to sponsor a video on this channel if I didn't believe in the product, and I really do here. So what we're going to do is we're going to build that in a Next.js 13.4 application. We're going to see how it works with React server components. Let's jump right into it. Here's the application we're going to build. This is actually hosted on Versal right now. So this is a product outfit builder application. It's got two routes. It's got a create route over here where you can select a bunch of products, and then you can simply name your outfit, and then hit add outfit. And then over on the main site, you see the new awesome outfit. It's a simple e-commerce demo that shows the core functionality that we're looking for from a managed backend service like Convex. So how's this done? Well, let's bring up Convex. This is the Convex homepage. From here, we're going to sign in. Once you're there, you get to the dashboard. It shows you at the top how much of the resources of the free plan we're already using. In this case, I've been working with this for weeks, and we really haven't even scratched the surface of the free offering, so it's got a very generous free plan. Let's jump into the instance that you're seeing on Versal. This is the Next.js outfit builder. It's got the server functions, the data that we're looking at here. This is the list of outfits, and then all of the products and their associated images. And it manages all of your files for you. And that's just the beginning. It handles things like cron jobs, shows all your logs. It's fantastic. Now, to start, we need to build out a Next.js application. Let's go take a look at their quick start, which shows you all of the steps to get started. So step number one is to create a Next app. Let's go do that in our terminal. So I'm going to create a Next app called Outfit Builder Demo. We'll take all of the standard options. Then I'll bring that up in VS Code. All right, that's done. Let's go back to our documentation. Step number two is to install Convex. All right, that's done. Step number three is to do a Convex dev deployment, and that's going to create a Convex instance for us. So let's go jump back to our terminal, do mpx convex dev. mpx convex is the convex CLI, so we're going to be doing a lot of commands with that. I'm going to create a new project. We'll call this one Outfit Builder Demo. I've already logged in, so it's created an instance over on Convex Dev. Let's go take a look at the dashboard. Here's my dashboard. I'm currently on NJS Alpha Builder. Let's go change over to the Alpha Builder demo that was created automatically for us. Now it's currently in prod. Let's go switch it over to development. And from here, we'll see our data and our functions and our files as they start to roll in. So the first thing we need to really do is to add some data to this. If we look back over at our application, on the left-hand side, we have that outfit builder. So we need that list of products so that we can actually display them. So that's the first place we're going to get started. Thankfully, that's also what they were thinking in the quick start. They go and have us adding a to-do list. We're going to go and add a list of products. Now, in the completed project code that's linked to in the description right down below, there's a file called products.jsonl, which is the seed data for our products table. Each product has a title, a price, and an image ID, which is currently empty. We'll seed that in just a bit. What we're going to do is we're going to use that convex CLI to seed that products table. So let's go back into our terminal, and we'll create a new terminal. And from there, we go to our quick start, where we see that we have mpx convex imports. So we're going to use that convex CLI to import those products into the products table. So we give the name of the table, and then we give the file name that has the data. 
and there we go. Now we have the products, but we don't have those images. To get those, I've created a little seed script that you can use to upload the images that are stored in the project. I'm not going to bore you with that, so I'm just going to skip ahead to where I've seeded it and we have our products ready to go. All right, now we've got all the images and we've got all the files. If we go to the files, we can click download and actually see each one of the images. Super cool. It's great that they have that file storage capability built right in. So the next thing we need to do if we take a look at our deployed application is we need to build the structure of our Next.js application. We need to put the header at the top and have the two different pages. So let's go do that real quick. So over in our app, we're going to go to page. We're going to remove everything. And I'm just going to put in a big old div that says home route. Now we need to create a new route for the outfit builder. So I'm going to create a new directory called create. And within that page.tsx, this one's going to have a big old piece of text that says create route. It's going to be a client component because we have state for the products that you select as well as the title of your outfit. All right, now to bind this all together, we need a header. So I'm going to go over to layout and I'll bring in the link component from next. And then above the children, let's just go and add a header. And that'll have two links, a slash route for home and then a slash create route for the outfit creator. Let's hit save and let's run this thing and see how it goes. All right, looking pretty good. We've got our localhost 3000. We've got our outfit builder. If I hit create, we go to the create route, rocking. So the next thing we want to do is show some products in here. And that actually means going back to that quick start and going to the next item on there. So step number six is to expose a database query. Any query that you make against the database, you want a server function that's going to go do that. Let's go and just bring in, first off, this import. And then I'm going to go back over to our Visual Studio Code, go back into the convex directory. And in there, I'm going to create a new file called products.ts. This is going to have any queries or mutations that are associated with products. You get to organize this however you want. I'm just going to have products. So we'll bring in that query. And then we need to export a function for our query. And we're going to wrap that in query. That's going to tell Convex that this is a query function. And then honestly, let's just return hello. Now if I hit Save, I can go over to my dashboard, go to Functions, and we can see we already have a product skit. That's what MPX Convex Dev is doing. It's synchronizing my local element with my development instance up on Convex. So let's hit Product Skit. At the top, we get a per function dashboard. We get the invocations, errors, the time it takes for each one. We get a set of scheduled jobs if we want to do like a cron job thing. And we get the implementation, which is super cool. Now let's actually try and run it by hitting this run function. And we get, hello, how cool is that? Now let's actually go take this all the way to the client and see what happens. The next thing we need to do is get ourselves a convex client provider. So I'm just going to copy this code directly. 100%. And then go over to my app, create a new folder for components. And then in there, I'm going to create the Convex Client Provider with the code that they've given us. Now, if you notice that next public Convex URL, that actually comes from env.local. This was built when we did MPX Convex Dev. It set up everything, and it set up a connection to our site, which is under Elegant Nightingale 976, obviously randomly generated. But it's gone and created all that connection for us. Super easy to use. The next step is bringing that client contact provider into our layout so that everyone has access to it. Let's go over here to Layout. And all we need to do is wrap our app in it. Now that done, we can go back into our page, and we can actually access that API. And this is crazy easy. They have a hook for us, use query from Convex React. So now we bring in the API, which is specific to us from the local generated Convex files. So every time that we make a change to that local Convex directory, it regenerates that API. So now we want to get our products. So we use that query. And then within that, we reference the API. And now we can see it automatically has products. That's super cool. So let's grab products. And then within that, get. How cool is that? So what is products right now? Well, if we do Command K, Command I, we can see that it comes back as a string. It sees what we output from here, a string. And that TypeScript was taken all the way from the server all the way to the client for us. And so we can just go and output that. 
Hit save. Go back into our server. And there we go. Hello. And in fact, if we go back and change it to goodbye, let's save. Now it's automatically deploying for us. Let's go over to our page. And it's automatically updated. That's because there's a WebSockets connection between the client page and the convex service. So we don't want a string, of course. We want the list of products. So let's go and do that. So we're going to turn this into an async function because we're going to make an asynchronous request. And then as an argument, we're going to get a handle to the database. From there, we can simply await a DB query. We give it the table name. In this case, products. And then we see that we want to collect all the records from products. All right, now over in the page, I'm going to do Command-K, Command-I here. So we see that we're getting back an array of any, which is not what we want. We want complete type safety from end to end. So why are we getting any? Well, what's happening is that Convex actually doesn't know the schema of products at this point. It's working in this loose schema mode. What we really wanted to do is have a typed schema. So to get there, is that going to be tough? No, not really. Let's go back over to the Convex dashboard. So over in the data section, we can see that we have a show schema button. And this actually has a generated mode where you can just click on copy and get a generated schema for what you have. So that's awesome. Let's go back into Visual Studio Code, copy and paste that into a file called schema.ts. And there we go. Now we've defined what our schema is. And if we do go take a look at page.tsx, it's going to tell us that we are getting back an array of IDs, creation time, image ID, product. And it's awesome. Very cool. But now, of course, we're getting a red squiggle under products. That's because React doesn't like us putting just an array of data into a child element like that. So let's go and format that in an unordered list. So let's just put in the product title. And maybe the product price. Let's hit save. How cool is that? Now let's go bring up the dashboard and put them side by side. So we have code chrono at 9.99. Let's make that 99.99. I hit save on the dashboard. I don't have to do anything on the client, and it automatically shows up. Again, that awesome WebSockets live updating between those two. Now, of course, in the deployed version, we have these images. And for that, we'll need image URLs. And if I look at the output of our get function, we can see that we have the ID of the image, but we don't actually have the URL of the image. To do that, we need to call the storage service and get that URL. So let's go back to our code and do that. So we bring in storage. Now storage allows us to get the URL for a given storage ID but it's asynchronous, so we need an easy way to actually map through all these products and then add on that asynchronous request for the URL. So to do that, they actually have a handy set of convex helpers that we'll bring into the project, and that'll give us an async map that we can use to make that really easy. So now in the lib directory, we have relationships.ts, and there we have async map that we can just give it some data, and it will asynchronously map back and give us a callback, and then we can use that to do our request. So bring an async map. We'll get the products, and then we'll run that async map over our products, and we'll just return a new product. But we, of course, we want the image, so let's go and create a new key called image. And with that, we'll await the storage, where we do get URL, and then we give it that ID. And if we get a null or an undefined, let's return an empty string. All right, let's try it out in our dashboard. And we can see even without even rerunning, we now get that image in there. So now we have enough to actually build the real create page. So back over in our app, I'm going to bring in a new component called product card. It's just going to do the nice image work from Next.js and put some nice tailwind on it. That's, that's going to give us that really nice looking product card. And then back over into our alpha builder page, I'm going to go bring in use state. Let's start with the title. That's just going to be an empty string. And then we have the set of selected items. So we're going to use a JavaScript set for that. Now a set you need to type. And what we really want is a set of product IDs. So we can get a type from Convex that's called ID. And then for that type, we can then say that we have an ID. And we get the list of all the available tables, in this case, just products. Awesome. 
Next, we need to bring in our product cards so we can show the products. And now bring in some JSX that says, if we have products, then go and create this unordered list of products where each list item is that product card. And then when you click on it, we look to see if it's in the set. And if we is there, then we remove it. If it isn't there, then we add it. Let's go take a look. Now we're getting a runtime error, but that's because Next.js is telling us that we're referencing an image that's in a domain that it doesn't know about. So you need to go and add that domain to our Next.js config. To do that, we simply just add the domain to the next config. And now we get all our products, and we can select them. Looks great. All right, now we're pretty close. We just need to add an input for the title. So above the product selector, I'll just now add an input for the title, and then an add button where when you click it, we'll just reset everything. So let's hit save. All right, looking good. And we hit add outfit, everything resets, perfect. Now what we need to do is we need to have an outfits table where we have a mutation where we can add an outfit based on what we've selected. So let's go back to our convex and go and add that outfits table. So we're going to go into our schema. We're going to create a new table called outfits. We're going to define that table. Now, of course, we're going to have a title. So just drop that in there. We know how to do that. So how do we add products? Each outfit is going to have a bunch of products associated with it. So what we can do in convex is we can Specify that using an array. It's really cool. So we say that we have an array. And you need to tell what type. So we're going to say that we have an ID. And then we give the table name. I hit Save. I go back to my dashboard, go to Data. And we can see that we have a new table called Outfits, all ready to go. Of course, it's empty. So now we need a mutation on the server side so we can add an outfit. So let's go build that. So under our convex folder, I'm going to create another file called outfits. And in this case, I'm going to bring in mutation from the generated server because we're going to be building a mutation. And we'll just specify one called add. So what do we need? Well, we need some arguments. We need to specify those. And those are going to match what we have in the schema. So let's just bring in our schema. So we're going to need a title and products. So where do we get that v? Well, we get that v from convex values. Now you specify a handler. So what's going to handle the request? And that handler takes the same kind of inputs that we had before with get, so it takes database. But it also takes the second argument, the arguments object. So let's bring in the title and the products. We can see here that we're getting awesome type safe hinting. And then all we need to do is insert that record. So I say db insert. Then what table do we want to insert into? Well, outfits. And what do we want to put in there? Well, we need to have what? products, and title. Code almost writes itself. One of the things that I think we're taking for granted along in this process is that we're not doing any SQL here or anything other than just TypeScript. This is just TypeScript. So if you're familiar with that, you are good to go. And of course it is under outfits add. We haven't actually run it yet. So let's go and run it. To do that, I'm going to go back to my page. I'm going to bring in use mutation. Now in the component, I'm going to create a new variable called out, add outfit. This can be the output of that use mutation. So what does that use mutation take? Well, it takes the API. And of course, now we have outfits and add. Ta-da! So now down in our click handler, we want to call that. So we await the add outfit. And we give it our variables. So in this case, we already know we have title. That's easy enough. And now we need products. So how do we do that? Well, we get an array from that set. Just like that. Let's go try it out. So let's do this side by side. I'll select a few products over here, name my outfit, and then over here is my dashboard with my outfits table. I'll hit add outfit, and we can see it up here just like that. How awesome is that? OK, so now we need the get for outfits so we can then drive the home page experience. Let's go see. So back over in Outfits, I'm going to add Query. And then I'm going to go copy and paste here. I'm going to go grab this, bring it in, and start changing some things. So I need that async map, so I'll bring that in as well. And now we don't want products, we want outfits. And we want outfits down here. This is going to be an outfit. 
Now this section is going to be a bit more complicated because we need to go and do the same kind of async map that we did with products here inside of our outfit. So now we have an array of products. How do we get all of them? Well, there's a handy function called get all. You just give it the database and the list of IDs, and it'll give you all of the objects. Now the really cool thing about convex when it comes to IDs is that they are globally unique across all of the tables. So if you, ha if you have an ID, you just ask for that ID, and no matter where it is in whatever table, it's going to go get it for you. So that's how get all works. And now we want to return a new outfit where we have the original outfit, but we go through each one of those products with those IDs, and then we get the image from before. So we have that same storage lookup that we did before, where you get the URL, and should be good. So let's hit save. We'll go back over to our functions. We'll go into outfits, which is now a folder, and do get, run the function, and we can see that we have a list of all the outfits, in this case just one, where we have the products associated with each outfit. I think we're good to go. Let's go build our home page experience. So currently the home route is an RSC, or React Server Component, which means that it's run exclusively on the server. Now I do want to get to where we I show you that, but I want to start with what we know already. So I'm going to turn this back into a client component. And then I'm going to bring in some stuff from page. So I'm going to bring in use query. I'm going to bring in our API. And then just like we did before with products, I'm going to bring in that use query over here. But I don't want to get products, I want to get outfits, right? So I just hit spacebar, outfits, dot, get. How cool is that? Of course, this is in products, this is outfits. Next, we need that product card so we can show the products. And then we're just going to map through those outfits, put the title, the price, and then a list of all of the product cards. So let's hit save. And now over on the left-hand side, I put the home page, and we can see that we have the outfits. Now let's go build another outfit, hit Add Outfit, and we can see it live updates. How cool is that? We can see that the older outfit, awesome outfit, is coming in first, and my outfit two is coming in second. I want that reversed. So let's go and see how we do database style ordering in Convex. So all I need to do is just say order, and then say ascending or descending. So we'll say descending. Hit save, and there we go. Alpha 2 comes first. How cool is that? Anything you want to do in terms of filtering and sorting, you can do in Convex, not a problem. OK, so now we've got the client version of the home page. How do we do it as a React server component, and what trade-offs are we going to take? Well, let's go and see how hard it is to turn this back into a React server component. So first thing I'm going to do is get rid of the use client, as well as the use query. So what are we going to do instead? Well, we're going to bring in the HTTP client. That's a client that you can use instead of the WebSocket client. So this will just make HTTP request instead of WebSocket request. So in order to use it, we need to initialize it. So we create a new convex client given that next public convex URL, which was set in our env.local when we did mpx convex dev. So now we just have to replace that use query. What do we do instead? Well, let's turn this into an async function. And let's await a convex query. And then again, we get that awesome hinting. So API.outfits.get. Hit save. Hit refresh. And now we have a React server component. Awesome. Now let's go and add another outfit. Hit add outfit. Now let's go refresh. And we can see that we're not getting an update. Was well, that a convex problem? Well, let's go take a look at the dashboard and see. No, it's not a convex problem. We have the data in there. It is a problem with Next.js caching. So Next.js has done a really hard cache on that React server component. So what we need to do is say to Next.js that this component is dynamic. So all we need to do is export a new constant called dynamic and say that it is forced dynamic. So let's hit save. Go back over and now we see outfit 3. And we add an outfit 4. We don't get it automatically. We have to do a refresh, but we do get it. So it is busting that cache. So there you go. There are some options for you when it comes to requesting data from Convex. You get your WebSockets version if you want to do that and get live updating, or you get that HTTP client, which is compatible with React Server components. It's awesome. All right, I hope this gets you excited about Convex and the live updating and these awesome queries and bringing potentially your front end skills 
to the back end in a really fantastic and easy to use type safe way. I've been using it for a couple of weeks. I really enjoy it. I definitely think you should have a look at it, certainly given the generosity of their free plan. In the meantime, of course, if you like the video, please hit that like button. And if you really like the video, hit the subscribe button and click on that bell and be notified the next time a new blue collar coder comes out.